At the Adelaide Grains Research Update, Dr Chris Preston was one of the feature presenters. His subject was sustaining our herbicide options into the future. And while he had good news, it was tempered with a little caution. One of the things that's happening is that we're starting to get some more pre-emergent chemistry than we've had in the past. And one of the things we have to worry about with pre-emergent chemistry is how it actually works in our environment. And we know from um, past um, residual herbicides that they can be different in different places and different environments. So while it's good to have new pre-emergent herbicide modes of action available, we have to make sure that we actually do a good job with each of the products that are out there find the best uh, fit for it, use it in the right spacing, um, make sure that we actually get the weed control we're after, um, however we need to do that, and that we don't end up with uh, issues around crop safety. Another big challenge, especially in South Australia, is ryegrass resistance to existing chemistry. Paddock surveys indicate between 34 and 62% of ryegrass is actually resistant to trifluralin and other chemistry is becoming less effective on grass weeds. What we're starting to see now is in a few areas is very high levels of resistance turning up to the group J herbicides, so Avidex, uh, Box of Gold, Arcade, those sorts of products. So we're starting to lose those now as well. Um, not much resistance to the group Ks yet, but we're picking up a little bit. And so, you know, we really do need to have some more options in that space. And, you know, to be really honest, Trying to do no-till and do it successfully for grass weed control without a res residual herbicide is really hard. The good news was that new products for grass weed control across a range of crops would be available soon. According to Dr Preston, what farm advisors need to get on top of is where to best use these products to get the most out of them. One of the things is to kind of understand how they're going to behave in our environment. So Devonol C is a, a new product, uh, came out last year, a few growers would have used it. It's a group K herbicide, um, very, very good ryegrass control uh, in canola. Uh, it's quite mobile in the environment, which means you don't need a lot of moisture to get it moving and activated, uh, which is sometimes a problem with some of our pre-emergent herbicides. Uh, but it has very, very good crop safety in canola. During the presentation, Dr Preston also outlined any potential risk. The biggest risk we're going to have with Devonol would be with light soils, large rainfall events, actually washing it out of the root zone of the, of the weeds. And so it's probably poor weed control that we're going to worry about seeing rather than crop damage. So this is, even though it's a group K, it's going to behave in terms of crop safety quite differently to butazan, which was very mobile, and if we got that in the crop row, we got damage. Alongside the new, a product which in Dr Preston's words, has been rediscovered and rejigged, Luxamax. The active ingredient simethylin, um, it's quite a soluble product, but it binds fairly tightly to organic matter. And the binding to organic matter is actually the key for us in terms of using Luxamax in our system. And we'll be using that entirely in a incorporated by sowing knife point and press wheel system. So no harrows, no other use patterns. And it's not for all cereals, the update audience was told. It will be registered in wheat only, not durum, not barley. Um, and you should go and read the label instructions carefully before recommending it. The biggest issue we've got with the product in terms of uh, crop safety is the wheat itself is not inherently tolerant. So we need to get separation between where our wheat seed is and where our herbicide is. So the label has got a whole range of conditions on it where crop damage could occur. So sowing shallow is one of them, so we need to sow at least three centimetres deep. Uh, high rainfall in the first three days after sowing will be a problem. So that needs to be managed, so you need to be watching the weather. Um, if your opening rainfall event typically tends to be a high rainfall event, then maybe Luxamax is not the product that you should be putting in that place. We need to worry about uh, light soils with low organic matter because it will be very mobile in those. It'll be much better in, in better soils that have got higher organic matter. And we need to worry about waterlogging we need to worry about non-wetting sands, anything that actually makes the herbicide move deeper than it normally will. On the positive side is grass weed control. 
In terms of ryegrass control, uh, in our trial work, this has been as good as Sakura or Sakura Plus Avidex. So it's been very effective for ryegrass control. It's crop safety that is the, is the concern there. Overwatch, a Group Q herbicide, was next. It will be available in 2021 and will bring a new mode of action to the suite of chemistry used for grass weed control. It's got activity on ryegrass principally, but also a little bit on some other grass weeds and on some uh, broadleaf weeds. And probably for South Australia, the, you know, the big one there is activity on Bifora. Um, it's very, very good on Bifora. So it's got a, a, a broader weed spectrum um, than perhaps we're used to with pre-emergent um, grass herbicides. Uh, its uh, behaviour is that it's less soluble than, than Luxamax or Devronol is. It's more soluble than Sakura. In terms of how it moves in the environment, uh, it'll move further than Sakura does, but probably not as far as Boxicol. So it'll need uh, less water to activate it, less rainfall to activate it than Sakura, but again, not quite as much as Boxicol. Uh, quite a broad spectrum of crops, so it'll be wheat, barley and canola. Uh, in terms of tolerance, wheat's the most tolerant, followed by barley, and canola the least tolerant. Initially, it'll be a, a knife point press wheel IBS uh, use pattern, and that will be the only use pattern we'll ever get for canola, because canola just doesn't have tolerance. What field trials have shown is when overwatch gets into the root zone, there's crop effect. It's quite spectacular. Um, uh, wheat goes white, um, and, but it usually grows out of it. And we haven't actually seen any issues where that crop effect has had an impact on yield in any of our trial work. I think the circumstances where it might would be where you to put this product in situations where the crop's already gonna struggle. Uh, because what we're relying on is the crop to grow out of those, out of those symptoms. So um, situations that get, that get waterlogged, um, might be a bit tricky. So I wouldn't actually recommend this for um, late sowing of wheat in higher rainfall areas. Early sowing will be fine, um, but that later sowing, um, that might be a bit problematic. Dr Preston went on to Ultro, describing it as another herbicide given a second life. An old pre-emergent for use in legume seed crops in the 1980s, reinvented for use in pulse crops. It's carbetamide. We had carbetamide in the 80s um, and it was used primarily in um, uh, white clover um, seed crops. And then when we stopped using it in white clover, it disappeared off the market. So it's come back as a pre-emergent herbicide for pulse crops. Um, it can be used across all of the pulses. Very good across a range of grass weeds. Really good on brome. So it'll be a, a useful product in that space. We don't have very many pre-emergent herbicides that really work on brome grass. Uh, it's quite water soluble, so it doesn't need a lot of uh, rainfall to activate it. Um, it's got a reasonable level of persistence, so it'll help us keep, uh, keep weeds out for a reasonable time during the crop. And the pulses are all tolerant of it. Last of the pre-emergents for grass weeds, Bay 167. Another new mode of action and expected to be available in 2023. The really interesting component of this product is, is a clonophen. Um, that's a, uh, a new mode of action. It's not something we've had before. Um, it's got some interesting um, chemistry in that it's uh, not very water soluble and it binds tightly to organic matter. So it's gonna sit on that, that soil surface. It's gonna stay up on that soil surface like we're used to seeing group G herbicides do. Uh, and the weeds are gonna pick it up as they come through. So we don't have to worry too much about mobility for um, crop safety here. Um, with that um, component of it. There are going to be other um, uh, herbicides in the mixture and they will change that behaviour a little bit. In terms of uh, what I've seen, it's got some uh, good um, grass weed control and it's uh, also got some broadleaf weed control. Uh, we've got likely to have two use patterns in wheat, uh, one of which will be the incorporated by sowing, um, pre-emergent use, but we'll also have an early post-emergent use pattern. And there we've got to be thinking about box of gold timing. So it's one to two leaf ryegrass stage. There were also new pre-emergent herbicides for the control of broadleaf weeds. And the first Dr Preston spoke about was Callisto, a Group H product, which most growers will see in 2021. Interesting thing about um, Callisto is that it's actually a pre-emergent herbicide for broadleaf weeds, and we don't traditionally use a lot of those. So, one of the things that we need to be thinking about is, well, where's its fit? 
It'll be in uh, wheat and barley, uh, very good activity on the brassicas and the thistles, um, volunteer legumes. We actually have a number of group H herbicides already in our system. So we have uh, Velocity, we have Talanor, we've got Frequency coming out this year. They're all post-emergent um, herbicides. So Velocity is really good on the brassicas, Talanor is probably better on things like Bifora. So you, you, know, you choose the product that suits the weeds that you actually have in your farming system rather than um, for other reasons that, that uh, might come up. So you need to choose it based on the weed population you've got. So where Callisto might come in is because all the others are post-emergent and ideally they're best used early, relatively early post-emergent when uh, particularly radish has got you know two to four leaves rather than letting it get big, often some farmers struggle to get that application on in time. Uh, particularly guys who've got big programs, getting back around and putting, you know, after having put all your pre-emergent grass herbicides out, then having to get back and put a, an early uh, herbicide out for, right, for radish control or broadleaf weed control can be, can be difficult. So that's probably where it's going to fit best. Um, what you won't be doing is you won't be putting another group H herbicide after it. You'll be looking at putting, uh, if you're going out to get some weed control later in the season, you'll be looking at one of the other um, options around um, radish herbicides. Also available in 2021, Reflex, a new Group G pre-emergent for broadleaf weeds and for use in pulse crops. Uh, the active is Fomasafen. Um, this uh, herbicide has got a little bit more solubility than we tend to be used to um, with Group G herbicides. So it will have a little bit more movement through the soil, so kind of moderate mobility in the soil. Uh, in terms of how we're going to use it, we'll be able to use it in all of our pulse crops. It's quite good on the thistles, so South Thistle and Prickly Lettuce will be, um, be very, very useful um, control in our lentil rotation where we're really struggling with those weeds now that they've got resistance to the IMI herbicides. Another Group G broadleaf pre-emergent to be released in 2021 is Viraxor. It's actually a mixture of two different um, actives. Um, one, saflofenacil, which we've seen. Um, the other is uh, triflumioxidin, which we, we haven't seen before. Uh, in terms of uh, how we'd use it, it'll be an IBS um, in, in cereals, as opposed to in pulses, uh, like the reflex. So we'll be using it in the cereal phase. A pretty broad spectrum, uh, broadleaf weed control. Uh, it does have a little bit of um, grass activity, but not enough for most of the uh, cropping region in the south. So we wouldn't get enough grass control out of it. We'd need to have a pre-emergent grass herbicide, and that's going to create a challenge for us because you can't mix pre-emergent grass herbicides with Viraxil and put them out as one application. So the people that will really suit are where they don't have a lot of grass weeds and it's mainly broadleaf weeds, or guys who are doing the double knock and they might have an opportunity to use it. To wrap up the presentation, Dr Preston talked about where this chemistry will fit. What are the pre-emergent options for each crop? So if we start with wheat, um, we have Ds and Js, um, but we're losing Ds and Js. So we really want to be focusing what we've got down here. So Ks, Qs and Zs are probably going to be the mainstay um, for the next period for us in terms of what we're using um, in wheat. In barley, um, mostly Ds and Js, and barley's been a bit of a problem for us from the pre-emergent um, herbicide space because a lot of it's been box of gold and um, people just, we just don't get the length out of box of gold for ryegrass control that we really need in a lot of environments. And so this is where um, Overwatch is probably going to be come in as the, the place you're going to think first. Probably barley's the spot to put that in the first instance. Uh, with canola, we actually have quite a lot of, um, uh, of options around there. We've got K's, we've got Overwatch if we want, but our D's and our C's are still working. So Papizomai's still working for us pretty well. Um, we're still getting some activity out of the triazines. So we actually have quite a lot of options there, and we don't necessarily have to go uh, and worry about the, um, you know, the sort of J space that we're getting resistance to. So we still have opportunities in canola, and probably the, the, the space where we can really start doing some different things is in the pulses. Because, um, you know, here we've got Gs. Um, we might have to mix them with a, uh, a grass herbicide to make sure we get grasses. Uh, we've got Es. 
we still have the Ds that are working and uh, in pulses you can actually, you have a higher rate of propizomide available to you. Uh, and we can do some other things. So what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna get a lot more complicated in terms of how you actually put these products out in a good rotation to make sure that you get good weed control in every crop in that rotation and we protect them from resistance. Dr Chris Preston, Professor of Weed Management at the University of Adelaide. And this video is one in a series of update videos recorded at the 2020 GRDC Grains Research Updates. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.